One of the number one ways people cheat at fishing tournaments is caging bass. And so what they'll do is they'll pre-catch bass over a period of days before the tournament, put them in some type of cage and hide them under a dock or someplace on the lake that's kind of inconspicuous. And then during the tournament, they'll go out, pull them out and pretend that they caught them that day. Now, not all cages look alike. I literally watched some videos where they pulled up this 55 gallon drum of this boat and start pulling out the five limit monster bass with calling buoys already attached to them. So if you find one of these, one of the first things you might think you want to do is say, I want to let these bass free. And I actually don't recommend that. I actually recommend calling the DNR uh, so they can set up a sting operation and catch those cheaters in the act. All right, so let me make myself clear. The reason that I'm kind of discussing cheating methods is to just raise awareness for it and kind of promote fair play within the fishing community. Now, I'm not interested in bashing anyone, so any of the stories I'm telling you today, I'm gonna leave out the names. All right, caging bass. So despite all my rage, I'm still just a bass in the cage. All right, number two. All right, another way people cheat in tournaments is board modifications. And so typically a traditional tournament, you're gonna weigh in your fish, but I am part of the kayak fishing community and I do a lot of month-long tournaments that are CPR tournaments, which are catch, photo, and release. Essentially, what you'll do is you'll catch a bass, you'll pull out your catch board, you'll put the bass on it, put your identifier up, and take a photo, and then you upload that to a system that keeps track of your biggest bass against all the other biggest bass out there. Well, these catch boards come in composite, and this one's aluminum, but some of the plastic composite ones are allowed. So what was happening is that we had this guy that was modifying his boards. And so what he did was he had three different boards and he cut out um, a section. He had one board that was a regular. He had a second board that had two inches cut out and he had a third board that had four inches cut out. And so what he would do is he would catch a bass, throw it on there, take one photo with one board, take it off, put the next board on, take another photo, take it off, put the next board on and take another photo. And then he would submit all three of these fish <laughs> to the tournament. So if you think about it, he just wasn't getting like an extra inch or two out of one fish. He was getting feet. So if he would have catch a 20 inch fish, he put that on one board, two boards, three, four, that one fish would be 64 inches with one fish. And he actually won tournaments for years doing this until you guessed it, he was caught. It's definitely bold, but I've heard of some technologies that actually be able to identify cut boards on some of these uh, tournament sites. And so uh, I haven't heard anything definitive. Uh, so if you know anything about that, uh, throw it in the comments because I'm interested in to see if that's still a way that people can cheat potentially. All right, number three, another way people cheat is through tail extensions, kind of like hair extensions, but with fish and so what the cheater would do is cut the tail off of bigger bass and then check this out when they take the picture of the bass they put the bass down and they cover up when they took the photo they'd hold the bass but cover up the place where they put the tail on top of the other fish getting an extra inch or half inch or whatever it is out of it so obviously this alteration compromises the tournament but it's also sick right you have to cut tails off of fish in order to do it so if you wonder why the rules have been updated and why there's a no touch zone on the back end of a fish well uh, I don't know for sure but I'm imagining it's because of this particular way of cheating and number four conversely is tail trimming and you might be thinking to yourself how in the world will tail trimming help someone in a tournament well it helps whenever there's slot limits so let's say I'm an angler the slot limit is between 16 and 20 inches. You can't count those fish. Um, and so you catch one that's 16.25 inches. So they'll break out the scissors and tra trim that tail down uh, to 16 inches so they can actually submit the fish. Once again, when you have to mutilate a fish in order to cheat, that's a whole nother level of cheating for me. It's sick. All right, number five way that people cheat is moving fish. And so what they'll do is they'll catch a fish in a different body of water keep it for a day or two or whatever and then on the day of the tournament pull that out of their live well and voila <laughs> you won the tournament so obviously blatant way of cheating however people have been caught in a variety of different ways i've read stories about three ways and so the first way that uh, these particular cheaters were caught is that uh, the fish that were caught that day didn't look like any of the other fish uh, in the tournament and that happens for a variety of reasons my understanding that particular diet of that particular lake uh, will make fish kind of look in a certain way. And so these fish look completely different. Their snouts, their face, kind of the makeup 
of their body. And so they actually got them to admit that they actually moved these fish from over 140 miles away from a different lake. The second way people were found out, <laughs> I mean, talk about unlucky, um, but one of the fish that they submitted was a tagged fish. And so when the DNR checked the tag, uh, they realized that it was caught in a different lake. Uh, so another way these anglers got caught, and it's a little bit more nuanced, but they submitted fish that had like red fins. Uh, they're like pink. And I guess, and I'm not sure, I've only read it in one place. I tried to find additional resources that, that shared this was true. I guess when a fish is under distress or under stress, that fins can turn red. And so if you're moving a bass 100 miles, that's kind of a sign that potentially that fish could have been moved or caged or whatnot. But there's a lot of different reasons why a fish's tail or fin could be a different color as well. So definitely nuance, but I know things that people look out for. If you have any particular expertise in that area, and if that is true, please let me know in the comments below. I am curious. Another way that people cheat is by bending their measuring boards. <laughs> it's crazy. And so what they do is they catch a bass and they bend their measuring board so much and get an extra inch or so out of the fish because when you take a photo on a curved surface, it makes the fish look longer. And so uh, I believe this is the way, uh, I know I know particular KBF has particular rules now against it. I know that uh, it's allowed if you've got a really heavy fish and it's just the weight of the fish is bending that board a little bit, but if you are forcing it, that's against the rules. And also kind of dialed in their, their uh, type of approved boards measuring boards that they use so i know for kbf it's only like three different types of boards it's their their catch their catch carbonate their catch x uh, they won't allow any other type of board out there i know those boards are pretty sturdy all right number seven is collusion so this one really happens if you have some buddies let's say you start a one month tournament uh, cpr tournament and you go out with a friend and you're like hey how about we just do one entry and we submit both the bass that we catch throughout the month on that one entry and so that's one way people can cheat basically just unfair advantage because you guys they got two anglers fishing one tournament also read a story of um, these guys were fishing in a tournament and another boat some local anglers came up like hey we caught a monster it's like 13 pounds they actually bought the fish off of them for $250 and submitted it and got big bass ironically only won three hundred dollars it's only won 50 bucks in that cheating but we're through a crazy series of events where we're actually found out. So if you happen to see a couple anglers out there and every time they get every time they catch a fish, they come together and take a photo and they go fishing again and they catch a fish and they come together and they keep doing that throughout the day. Now one, they might be sharing the latest funny TikTok or you never know. You just don't know. But now that you know how it happens, you now can be on the lookout for it. Alright number eight live bait. So it's against most tournament rules to use live bait. So if you happen to run into your buddy who's fishing the same tournament for you and he's loading up on some shad in the morning, it's gonna be an awkward conversation. Number nine is stuffing. Stuffing that bass full of weight that is foreign to the bass uh, is, is probably, a, probably a more common way of cheating. And so if you haven't heard about the walleye tournament anglers stuffing, getting caught, uh, that kind of went viral. Uh, about a year ago or so, so you're pulling out lead weights um, that's an easy catch but a lot of times what people will do is they'll stuff bass with bait fish and so I got weights and fish and it's lead weights is one thing I got bait fish in a bass's mouth in its stomach is uh, a little bit more difficult to prove so it's a little less weight but nonetheless a way that people cheat our right, number 10 is scouting this is where you pay someone on fishing day, I guess you don't even need to pay them, but they're out in the same lake you are. And say they, let's say they find the fish, they get on them, and they call you up and tell you where the fish are holding up. So it really just gives you an unfair advantage to all the other anglers out in the lake. Next we have, you, they run multiple lines, right? They might be trolling, um, but also casting at the same time. A lot of times against tournament rules where you're only allowed to have one lure in the water at a time. So obviously giving cheaters an unfair advantage. You know, the dark side of fishing tournaments is an unfortunate reality. And I know that people get pissed off when they hear that people do it. Um, but hopefully this helps you kind of help identify or help see maybe someone who may be cheating that you may otherwise have overlooked. So hopefully that was helpful for you. Please let me know in the comments below. I'm curious if have you heard of other ways that people cheat 
at fishing tournaments these was kind of a bucket a lot of the a lot of the research I did uh, a lot of the different cheating methods basically fell into the 11 buckets I shared with you but let me know in the comments below maybe it's a different cheating method or maybe it's a story that you heard it's absolutely crazy uh, I look forward to reading those and if you're into kayak bass fishing guys I have over 600 videos on the topic and here are two of my top videos with over 100,000 views check this one out or this one 